In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create Google Ads structured snippet extensions, including a whole bunch of examples and best practices. Now, structured snippet extensions are often overlooked by Google advertisers, particularly beginners, but that's a big missed opportunity because they can help improve your click-through rate and your overall Google Ads performance. Firstly, what is a structured snippet extension? Well, it's an ad extension, so it makes your ads larger and it allows you to specifically highlight certain elements of your product or service. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So why use structured snippet ad extensions? Well, like all Google ad extensions, they help increase the size of your ad on the page, which can help improve your click-through rate, so there's benefit there. They also can provide your prospect with more information about your products and services. You can highlight certain features, which can really help with a couple of things. It can help them decide that they want to click because within the thing they're searching for, there's a subcategory thing they're really looking for and you provide it. So if they then go ahead and click, they're then more likely need to convert because they know you provide what they're really looking for. It can also show them perhaps you're not right for them. If your structured snippet demonstrates information about your product or service that means, oh, actually, you might not be quite right for them, they can then decide not to click, which is great because that means you don't waste budget. You don't want people to click, realize you're not suitable for them, and then leave. So it can help in both sides of, of that click, as it were, well worth putting them in there. So let's go ahead and create these uh, structured snippet extensions. So obviously you want to come into ads and extensions, click on this little plus, and then select structured snippet from the uh, from the drop down list. And like with everything Google Ads related, we've got a handy preview on the right hand side. Um, it's this highlighted part that's got header value one, two, three is an example. Now, like with most uh, ad extensions, you can add these at the account, campaign, or ad group level. The one you want to select depends on what you're going to put in here. So you might have, um, details about your product service that apply to your entire business, in which case you could use the account level. Perhaps they apply to certain areas of your business. You could use campaign level, or perhaps they're really specific and just apply to that specific ad group um, setup. So obviously, if you're not quite sure right now, just get started as you create more structured snippets. You'll, it'll make sense of where to put them and things like that, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and create new. Then you can select your language. Obviously, I'm going to use English. And then we've got header type. So this is sort of like the category of structured snippet, if that makes sense. And we have to use Google's presets here. We can't enter our own. You can see there are a number of examples. I'm gonna go through each one and provide some example values and show you what sort of business might use this and what that might look like. So the first one is amenities. And we can see that as we go through this, Google will auto fill some examples for us, which is really helpful. So for example, they've put in Wi-Fi pool fitness center. That's obviously for like a hotel or something like that. And we can see over here on the in the preview, we've got amenities followed by value one, two, three. Now, because these are autofilled, these aren't actually in there. If I was to actually go ahead and type these in there, we can start to see what this looks like in um, the preview. Amenities, Wi-Fi, pool, gym, etc., which is really handy. So then if we change over to brands, um, you might go with something like Nike, Adidas, and Reebok, if, for example, you sold sports apparel. You know, you're gonna have to customize these depending on your business and not all of these are going to suit your business for sure. You may only be able to use one or two um, of the ones that are more appropriate. Then we get on to courses. So let's assume you're in the digital marketing space and you're selling, for example, a course on Facebook ads, a course on Google ads, and maybe a course on SEO, something like that. And then we can see how that's going to look in the preview. Then we've got degree programs. For here, we could have something, these are gonna be broader topics in the courses, right? We could have, sticking in the same thing, we could have marketing, we could have um, business administration, for example. We could have finance. The next one on the list is destination. So if you're like a hotel chain or something like that, maybe you want to list where you are or you're a conference or you're that sort of thing, you know, we could have, for example, London, um, obviously for a business that's operating in the UK, Bristol, you know, um, Glasgow, different different locations, and you could do this as small, you could do this as big like cities, you could even do this as countries, um, however this suits your business. Then we get on to featured hotels, and this is going to be a variation on what we just did previously. You could go with the same ones, for example, or you could get more specific. You could have specific areas of London um, included in there, just depends on what you're doing advertising wise and where your hotels are and what you want to, to list in here. Then we've got insurance coverage. Now, some of these are really quite specific in terms of the industries and the businesses they're suited for. So if you've got insurance coverage, you could have, for example, auto insurance, you could have you know, health insurance, you could have travel insurance, depending on whatever it is you want. 
Next, we move on to models. Now, this is going to vary depending on your business a lot. You could have, for example, if you sold uh, smartphones, you could have like the iPhone 14 as one. Well. You could have um, the iPhone 14s. I don't even know what the names are anymore. You could have the iPhone, you know, 87, which will probably be coming out in a few years' time, won't it? Then we move on to neighborhoods. So we're getting really specific with the locations here and perhaps you operate in one city. You know, if we're operating in London, for example, we could go with like Hammersmith as one and then you could have Chiswick. And these are sorts of things, you know, if you're a state agent, as an example, lots of different businesses, your dental practice, you might wanna say exactly where your specific locations are within a larger area that's gonna suit a city. Um, quite well. Service catalog. This is probably the one that gets used the most often because um, a lot of service businesses could use this. So for example, if you're a, a window cleaning business and you also offer you know, patio cleaning and perhaps gutter cleaning, as like those sorts of companies often do, those might be good examples to add in um, as a service catalog. There are tons of examples. It's probably the most commonly used is service catalog. Then shows. Here you could list the names of the shows if you're a theater, for example, or you could even list dates. So you could go with like 17th of May and 24th of June. If it's you know one location, one show, you could adjust that depending on on your specific needs. Then we get into styles and there's lots of different things that we can use here. If you're selling jackets, for example, you could have different styles of jacket that you sell. Perhaps you sell casual ones, perhaps you sell formal ones, perhaps you sell um, black tie as, a, as an example. And then finally on the list, we've got types. And again, types is going to vary across lots of different businesses. Let's say you're selling ski boots. You know, you could have beginner, you could have intermediate, um, you could have advanced and there's lots of different products and services that would fit into those three types, wouldn't they? Beginner, intermediate and advanced. So those are some examples of how structured snippet ad extensions could work. Hopefully that's got you thinking about how you can make this apply to your business. And I want to quickly talk about the strategy around structured snippets and, and best practices on how you can get the most out of this particular feature. So firstly, if you can, it's often a good idea to add values. So you can see add values at the bottom here, beyond advanced, we could have something like expert, um, and we can keep going on this to some extent and, and put in lots of different options. Like with all ad extensions, there's no guarantee that your structured snippets will be displayed in the first place, and there's no guarantee that a certain number will be displayed. You know, if it's not like it's gonna take up the entire page on Google or anything like that, but the more data you can give here, the more you can give Google to test, the better that that is. So don't think that you're always just limited to three. You can certainly add in extras as well. Then when it comes to creating different structured snippets, perhaps you can use a types one, perhaps you could also use a style perhaps you could use a service catalog, perhaps there's three or four, maybe more, that are suitable for your business, we'll definitely go ahead and create each one of those structured snippets and test. I'm a big fan of giving Google um, lots of different options, so if we can give them four plus structured snippets to test, that's great, you're likely to get better results when they work out which one performs best, perhaps it's which one performs best for certain ad groups, certain campaigns, etc., etc. So go ahead and add in um, a number and test a whole bunch, that is a good idea. Also important to go back in and review your structured snippet ad extension performance. So you can see like with all ad extensions, how that structured snippet has performed in terms of click-through rate. If you have conversion data as well, then great. And you can make decisions. You can be like, okay, this types one that we were using isn't working as well as the styles one. Let's get rid of the types one. Let's pause that and focus on style. So you probably don't need to do that super regularly um, because like most ad extensions, these aren't gonna be displayed all the time, so it does take a while for data to uh, to accrue. But if you do that a couple of times a month, that's a good idea. Okay, and then there's a few things you need to watch out for with structured snippet extensions. I'm gonna tell you about those in a second. Before I do, I just wanna quickly let you know about our Google Ads done for you services. So my company can create, manage, and optimize Google Ad campaigns for you. And we do have a 3K per month minimum budget requirement. If you meet that, you wanna find out more information, you can click on a link in the video description below. That'll take you to a page where you can book a slot directly in with one of my team members, and they'll be able to tell you everything about our service and how we might be able to take that workload off your hand and help improve your results. So there are a few things you need to watch out for when it comes to structured snippet extensions. Firstly is punctuation. You know, we can't go ahead and pop in a load of exclamation marks and that applies to all sort of Google ads related um, stuff. 
if it doesn't make sense, like it certainly doesn't here, definitely don't go ahead and pop that in. So that's just something to be aware of. Second thing to mention is that you don't want to try and be clever here and put more than one value into a single value slot. So for example, we've got 25 characters, so we could theoretically put advanced expert in like that and then free up space elsewhere to get more in. Um, this structure snippet will definitely not get through the review process if you try and do something like that. So make sure you watch out for that and don't include more than one value. You also need to make sure that your whatever you're including in your values is actually appropriate to the header that you've selected. So for example, if we selected neighborhoods and then went with beginner, intermediate, advanced, it's just not gonna work, right? Um, so just something to watch out for. You probably wouldn't do that sort of thing anyway. You want it to make sense for your user as well as for the Google review process. But if you try and get through something that's um, a little bit clever, so let's say you went with insurance coverage instead of the categories, you went with, I don't know, like the best ever, and then you had some other sim similar things like that to try and maybe be a bit clever, Google's not gonna like that. It's going to get rejected. And then finally, in terms of structured snippets, things to watch out for is you can't really include any promotion here. So Google really doesn't want you to use these to help promote your product or service. So you couldn't put anything in here like hurry, sale, ends, or anything along those lines, right? That's certainly going to get your structured snippet um, not through the review process is going to be rejected. And you don't need to do that with structured snippet extensions either because there are other ad extensions to do that. The, the primary example being call out extensions. And actually I'll show you exactly how to create call out extensions in another video that you can check out right here. I provide a ton of examples and best practices there. If you haven't already got call out extensions performing really well for you in your Google ad campaigns, go ahead and check that out.